Well, the future applications that, uh, that we see center around authentication. There's been a lot of focus in biometrics around the enrollment side, so that you create um, a, say, an India uh, ID program uh, where you bring in uh, citizens for a, a voting system or for a, uh, for a government entitlements program. But then once you've enrolled all of the people, now you want to bring that into how they can actually use those identities, uh, such as in a mobile terminal that they could use uh, for microfinance, uh, for for uh, uh, to to facilitate banking, to facilitate um, uh, uh, creating an a, creating an identity where there was no identity before for emerging markets. I think the future of biometrics is is starting to move um, both more broadly into citizenship, citizen type applications, so um, welfare out of kind of um, just border control, but also into uh, a whole lot of areas which traditionally haven't been uh, using biometrics, and that would be things like um, in Australia, pubs and clubs, uh, and um, obviously in the UK there's been a lot of movement towards schools, and, and that, that kind of retail sort of sector where uh, I think um, there's going to be a very large audience of people that want to use biometrics and the challenge is going to be how, how do you let people use those in a way which is going to be secure and privacy sensitive. Well, I'm excited about a lot of applications. In particular, I, I like the idea of biometrics for border crossing. This is not a new application. Uh, the earliest biometrics for border crossing projects were in the early 1990s. I think the Schiphol Airport uh, uh, in Amsterdam was the very first, but it was followed by a large program involving 13 airports in the United States called INSPASS that ran from about uh, 1994 to about 2004. Uh, very excited by that, uh, but lately there have been some border crossing projects based on face recognition, for instance in Finland and Portugal and Australia, here in the UK, uh, also in New Zealand. I think those projects are very, very exciting. Uh, the issue is what the, will the uptake be, meaning what percentage of the travelers will actually use the system. And secondly, will there be enough people using the system that the systems can pay for themselves in effect by cost savings in the usual primary line? The future is enabling the actions of the honest majority, uh, securing their privacy, securing their financial assets, allowing them to enter borders, and most importantly, and it's an area that I'm most excited about, is the social inclusion programs, which India began and now Indonesia is perfecting, and we're seeing a rapid development of interest around the world to allow people to be counted to their identity, to be empowered, to do just about everything that we do, but do it more securely. Well, I think the real future for biometrics technology is in providing benefits to people. Uh, for example, what we're doing in India is about expanding the, the, the role of biometrics to deduplicate people and then to be able to help provide benefits for them. And so every time I've seen biometrics become successful, there's a real value proposition around the individual's benefits. And that's where I see the growth of biometrics. Wherever we can provide benefits to a person using them, I think they'll readily be used.